Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here. Today we are back on PT Studio, as you can see, taking a look at another deck for the post-rotation format. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at, yet again, another single prize deck. We've kind of been on a roll with that uh, lately. And so today we're gonna to be checking out Greedent, definitely I think one of the more interesting single prizers from the recent Darkness of Blaze set. And of course guys, if you need any uh, cards to complete this deck or any others, you guys can head over to ptcgostore.com. Use that coupon code RAREcandy at checkout. Save yourself some money on any code you might need. And of course, our patrons at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg also get an exclusive discount of their own for an even bigger discount. So if you guys do need some codes for the online game, definitely check out our friends over at ptcgostore.com. But getting back into the actual deck, Greed It is, uh, you know, it's kind of similar to a card like Behem that didn't come out too long ago. It has this attack, Smack and Run, for 100. And then you put this Pokemon, all cards attached to it, into your hand. So we're... Kind of like a hit and run style deck. Every time we attack with Greedent, we want to promote something kind of annoying into the active spot, make it hard for our opponent to take knockouts while we just kind of chip away at them 100 damage at a time. So looking at some of the wall Pokemon we have, we have, of course, a 3-3 Galarian Cursal at line. Uh, Galarian Cursal, I think it's just a, a dope uh, card in general. I've really been trying to make this, this card work for a while. And I think it does pair pretty nicely with Greedent here. Of course, has that Perish Body attack whenever it gets knocked out in the active spot by damage. A point of heads, the attacking Pokemon is knocked out. So this is really, really good in a format that's just dominated by three prize Pokemon and I guess two prize Pokemon to a slightly lesser extent as well. So a lot of times when they knock out Galarian Cursal, you're going to grab yourself three prizes in the process, which is really cool. So this is definitely one of our main wall Pokemon. We also have a copy of Zamazenta V in the list for that Dauntless Shield ability. Prevent all damage done to it by the attacks of Pokemon VMAX. So I think Zamazenta is just one of those cards that's going to just gradually get better as more and more Sword and Shield set releases. Darkness of Blaze gave us a bunch of new Pokemon VMAX added into the mix. Of course, we got Eternatus coming out in this set, Scorch, Salamence, etc. So Zamazenta is only going to get better and can be a pretty good wall if your opponent has already evolved all of their VMAXs and they have nothing left to hit you with. Zamazenta could be a really effective wall to kind of surprise your opponent with. Of course, we also have the four copies of the Lily's Pokedoll, just kind of probably generally the best wall Pokemon we have because it doesn't give a prize when it gets knocked out, which is really nice. Uh, but that's sort of the core strategy of the deck, but we definitely have some sort of, um, you know, support Pokemon and other things that we're going to be looking at here. We also run a 2-2 Golisopod line. So Golisopod, another new card from the new Darkness of Blaze set, has this really, really strong attack. Hard time slash is 30 plus 50 more for each of your opponent's Pokemon V and GX in play. So the issue with our Greedent is that it, you know, it hundreds okay, but you know, you're, you're really not taking one shots on anything. And sometimes you need this like hard hitting finishing Pokemon, maybe in the late game to just take your last, uh, you know, two prizes really quickly. Uh, just because Greedent kind of gives your opponent time to find those bosses orders and things like that. So sometimes we do need this heavy hitter in the late game. So think of something even like Eternatus, which can have up to eight bench Pokemon. 50 for each of those being V and GXs is uh, really insane. I've actually pretty consistently one-shotted uh, Eternatus V Max on several occasions. So yeah, this is a pretty strong attack against these different V and GX decks. And really quick to point out, we are choosing to play two copies of the Water Wind Pod back from Unified Minds. I think this is definitely the better of the two has a one retreat cost, which means Air Balloon will work on it. It won't work on the other since it has a three retreat cost. And also being water type means something like a Volcanion or a Blacephalon can't quite as easily just knock it out right away. So I definitely like the water one a little bit better here. Uh, a couple other things worth pointing out in the deck. Uh, we're playing one copy of Oracorio. This is just to kind of help us, you know, find those special energies that we need or whatever it might be on a given turn with that Dance of Tribute ability. So this even activates even when something like Lily's Pokedoll gets knocked out. Even if your opponent doesn't get a prize, you can still draw three cards with this. Uh, but there are some interesting inclusions in the list that I'm really surprised other people haven't been discussing when building around this. Uh, the first one's gonna be Wondrous Labyrinth Prism Star. I think this is a really, really good stadium for this deck. And that's because even though Greedent has a two attack cost, when we're playing Triple Acceleration Energy, the energy doesn't get discarded. It just goes right back into our hand. So as you can see, we are playing uh, you know, a much heavier line of the triples as opposed to Twin Energy. So if we get Wondrous Labyrinth in play with Triple Acceleration Energy, we can still attack and not have any downside from the, the Wonder Lab. 
We do, of course, have the Marsh Shadow to get rid of uh, chaotic swells and things like that. That way we can safely get our lab down. Uh, but yeah, I really like lab in conjunction with Greedent and the triple acceleration energy. Another thing we are playing in this deck is a really interesting supporter. It's going to be three copies of Ingo in Emmet. So one of the big downsides to uh, Greedent is the fact that, you know, it gets really hurt hard by one of the most popular supporters in the format. And of course, that's Marnie. So after you use Greedent, you're going to get that Greedent and your triple back in hand. And if your opponent plays Marnie, that just puts those cards at the bottom of your deck. So Ingo and Emmett's really cool because you can actually discard your hand and draw five from the bottom of your deck and basically just unmarnying yourself, which I think is actually really cool. That's one of the downsides I found with Greedent and Ingo and Emmett's. I think a really, really cute uh, solution to dealing with that. So really uh, liking this inclusion so far. Uh, but with that being said, guys, I mean, everything else pretty standard. We got the two heirloom just to give us free retreat and everything else just pretty straightforward stuff. So that is going to be the list we're going to be trying out for Greedent here. Let's head in some games and we'll show up how this thing is going to look in action. All right, we have ourselves a game here and we are playing against, I think it was Caribou83 was the username. But we see the Picaram deck box. That's actually kind of sketchy for us because if this is the pre-rotation format, you know, I think Mew is definitely a card we would want to play in this deck, but since we're not... Uh, since this deck is built for the post rotation format, I don't think Mew is quite as good. So I really hope this is not Picaram. That would actually be pretty annoying for us, I think. So luckily we are going to take a mulligan in this hand. Not too good. Unfortunately, our opponent is going to be able to see what we are playing here at this point. We're kind of revealing our strategy to them. Okay, so yeah, we're going to start with the Wimpod here. This is not going to be a fun Ingo and Emmet we're going to have to, to, to do here. Hopefully we can top deck maybe a Pokemon communication. That would be really good. That way we can maybe save this Golisopod or this Greedent and not have to discard our hand right away. That would be great. So there is the Jirachi. Again, my bet is on Picaron based on the deck box currently, but it could be anything. Okay, we see the Tapu Coco. So again, still kind of thinking this is Picaron. Really not sure um, if we can bench or Corio in this matchup, if that's going to be the case. Uh, Okay, so there is Picaram, so it is going to be the Picaram deck. Now, the one thing we could try to set up is a Golisopod. Actually, it's more reason to not have to discard this one immediately if possible. Uh, just because Picaram is normally pretty filled up with Pokemon V and GX on their bench. So, we'll have to see what's going to happen, though. There is a Zero Aura, okay. So that's another plus 50 damage for our glass pot if we do set that up. Uh, next turn, we definitely want to find ourselves, I'm just trying to think, we want to find ourselves a Polka Doll and a Squavet. I think that's really the main things we're going to be on the hunt for. Okay, so right now we're hitting 180 with our Goliath pot. I imagine it's probably going to fill up a little bit more once this Tapu Coco uh, leaves play as well. So friends having a pretty good first turn, and there we do see them discard Eldegoss and Malalon. Malalon's another card that can be kind of annoying for our deck, so the fact that they got rid of both of these means we're probably not going to have to worry about that too much, I imagine. So they can't play a supporter turn one, so I'm really just not sure what else they can really do. They're going to burn the Koga Prism. I'm cool with that. That's fine. I really wish they would have had to have gotten down Thunder Mountain before the Dedenne because I just I have a feeling as soon as we put down this Wonder Lap, it's just going to get bumped out of play. I think Guzma and Hala is definitely a card they could be playing in their deck. So, Or even just Volkner. So there's Tag Call. Okay, just a Raichu alone, Raichu. So maybe they already have Guzman Hall in hand. If they are playing it, that is. So what can we top deck? Maybe a Ranguru would be nice. Okay, Pokemon Communication. That's actually great because I really want to save this Wonder Lab. So put Glasspod back in. I think that's going to be a good attacker for us. Okay, so a ringer is prized, so we're probably not going to be able to actually save this. Uh, probably not going to be able to save this Wonder Lab, apparently. 
I mean, there's a world where we just get a second Wimpod. I kind of like that at the same time. But we'll go for a Squabbit, I suppose. We do probably need to set up some of those. So we'll do this. Get down our Wonder Lab. Hopefully they don't have the stadium. It'd be nice if this could buy us a turn. There is a triple on top of our deck. Um, sure. Let's just draw from the top. That's fine. All right, so we have a Zamazenta. Pretty worthless, so I'm just going to quick ball. Going to get rid of that and probably... Hmm. Man, this is kind of tough. Uh, I think we'll actually just get the Squabbit here. And I'm kind of cool if one goes down. Because I do actually want to save this Wimpod. I think Glyspod is going to be kind of a good card for us here. Especially if they do bench another uh, GX or V. That would be pretty good for us. Uh, and they, just, they have the Thunder Mountain right away. So we kind of saw that one coming, guys. We're having kind of a bad start, too. So I really wish we would have found the Doll this turn. That would have been really, really good. Here's a Skateboard from our opponent. So right now we're hitting, what, 230 on a Picaron? with Glasspod if we did do that. So if they bench another Pokemon V or GX, that'd be good. Like ideally they would bench another Picarom and accelerate all the energy to there. I think that's what I kind of want to see. Because then that would potentially give us a way to uh, knock out this Picarom. Here we're going to see Volkner. Let's see what they're going to get here. Obviously a lightning energy, but what item are they going to get here? Again, I'm kind of hoping a Quick Ball, maybe to grab a Bolt End or another Picarom. I really want to see them get a, uh, another Pokemon V or GX here. So, Energy Switch and Lightning Energy, okay. Maybe just setting up for next turn. Or are they thinking about trying to knock us out with maybe like Tingly Return or something? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess they're probably just getting the energy switch preemptively for the next turn. But we're going to Marty them, so they're not going to get a chance to use that. <laughs> they're going to attach to Zero Aura. That's fine as well. There's going to be a full blitz. So yeah, this next turn is going to be pretty sketchy for us. Now, hopefully they don't accelerate all the energy to Pcrom. I really want to go Marty swing on this thing and find Marshadow. Okay, so that's best case scenario, actually. I really want to avoid Tag Vault for as long as possible here. So we'll just do this. Can we top deck Glass Pot? That would be pretty good. Ooh, okay, so that kind of works. So I think I'll actually will just do this and get a hit in on this Picarom. Kind of while we have the chance right now. Unfortunately, it's not a one-shot, but we're going to get in a pretty substantial amount of damage here. Great ball, what do we get? I guess we get a Curse Aura, that's fine with me. And we could put down Oracory, but I really just don't want to give them that option. So for now, we're just going to hit them with a Hard Time Slash. 230, so if they do try to attack with this guy again, uh, we can pretty easily pick it off. Now, one thing that could be bad is if they do get the uh, Tag Bolt this turn. I'm hoping they don't. I feel like it's kind of unlikely. Like, it's definitely possible. But they need, what, an attachment and two energy switches? It's, like, not out of the realm of possibility. But if they do Tag Bolt, knock out Glass Pod, and our Squabbit, uh, that's going to feel really bad. I'm actually not sure if we can sort of come back from that at that point. See so if they are going to attach to Dedenning. I'm actually cool with that. That kind of guarantees that we're not going to get, uh, you know, nuked by uh, a Tag Bolt. Okay, so just a full blitz. I'm definitely cool with that, guys. So where are they going to put the energy? Maybe just on Zero Aura? So after we knock out this Peak Rom, like, I feel like there's actually a world where we can put down the Aura Since we're kind of taking the Tag Bolt option away, more than likely. 
I mean, granted, this is probably going to be a great catcher target at some point, but I think it's going to be really important for us to get this KO. Okay, we do get a doll. That is fantastic. They have not used any boss's orders. That's the thing that scares me about Oracorio here. So we're going to energy down and a Greedent down. What are the odds that we can hit what we need this turn off one research? Um, yeah, I think we have to forgo the Oracorio here. I just don't, I think it's too big of a liability. Okay, and that did actually kind of work out for us here. So we will go with the Greedent. Just do this. Uh, great ball here. We do need our Squabbit. I mean, I would like the Marshadow to get rid of their Thunder Mountain, but at the same time, I'm not stressing too hard about it. So I think here we just... I think I'll actually go for the Marshadow here, potentially. That seems okay. Ooh, we actually prize the Squabbit. Which feels kind of bad. So I'll just go for the Marsh Shadow. I want to take the option of like a Tingly Return away unless they want to commit that extra energy. So we'll just do that. And I think we're just going to have to promote a doll this turn just because we don't have a way to retreat this Cursula. So if they did try to just leave that there, we would be in a bad spot. Um, yeah, I'm cool with this for the moment. And so we're actually going to jump ahead on the prize exchange. We need a support off these three prizes. A Ranger, that, that does help us. And another Squabbit. So the good news is we can actually live off this turn, or I'm sorry, this hand for a few turns. Because we have energy, we have Greedent. So we can just kind of keep looping this for, what, two turns? Two more turns? And we have a Ranger, so that can help us maybe find a supporter in the meantime. There is a Bolt End. Okay, that's fine. So we probably want to find our other Wimpod. Here's the boss source. So again, kind of glad we didn't go the uh, uh, the Oracorio route. Otherwise, this would have been kind of bad for us. But that's fine. I don't mind just kind of chilling on this hand for the moment. So in this case, I think we will promote the Cursula here. Since we're not going to be attacking no matter what anyways. Um, do we get down Wimpod this turn? So what, we're hitting for what, 230 right now? Yeah, so I don't think Wimpod's necessary just yet. So here we're just Primate Wisdom. Sure, I'll put Triple on top of our deck here. We do get research, so I think I'm just going to save this hand for the moment. So next turn we will have a pretty good turn lined up for us. We can actually quick ball for a Wimpod. Now, the one thing is, if they don't have boss orders, we can actually potentially just win this turn too if they just try to attack into this Cursula. There's a quick ball, maybe going for a Dedene to find other bosses orders. That seems kind of likely to me. Okay, yeah, that seems... That right they've only played the one boss so yeah i think realistically they can get there especially since they have jirachi as well so if they go for the dene and they have a switch but no boss that could also get them there okay apparently bolton so yeah i imagine no matter what they're going to attack with bolton this turn if they are going to attack into curse love here they have the switch Going for the Star Wish, so very interesting. They're not going for the Dene first. I don't know what's in their hand. Maybe they're, there's something they don't want to get rid of. Maybe, yeah, just trying to think what it could be they wouldn't want to toss. Because really the only thing they need at this point is boss's orders every turn. Because ideally you would want to Dene, discard your hand, draw six. 
Oh, I, they're probably worried about another Golisopod, maybe? Maybe that's why they're not just instantly benching the Dedenne. So here they're going to grab the Research. But yeah, hopefully they just go for the Research. That, that'd be best case scenario for us at this point. But yeah, uh, I think maybe they didn't just Dedenne here or initially to try to say, hey, if we can find the boss with Jirachi, that would be kind of ideal in this situation. Now, next question is, are they actually brave enough to attack into us? <laughs> That's the next thing. Because if they do attack us and knock us out with Bolton and we knock that out, all we need is a boss's orders to win at this point. So, okay, this is a big, this is a big knockout here. So what happens? Hey, and we do get heads. Okay, we're in good shape, guys. I, I feel pretty good about this game. And going in it, also solid. So that's what I'm talking about. So I think at this point, all we need is probably another Glycepod to close out this game. Or how many boss ores have we played or discarded? None. So yeah, we just need that to knock out Jirachi and we're good to go. So yeah, we'll just discard the Ingo and Emmet. That's fine with me. We'll grab a Wimpod. And I want to Primate Wisdom and save one of these energies, but if we hit Golispod off of this, that feels kind of bad. But at the same time, like, really, Golispod, how important is that going to be? We might just need literally just bosses' orders to eventually close out this game. Yeah, so let's just do this. If you hit Great Ball, that's pretty cool. Okay, so nothing there. We do see a boss's orders there. And up there, just toss our hand. And okay, so unfortunately, still no boss's orders in sight, but I still like the spot we're in, guys. I think we can probably make this happen. It really just depends on how many boss's orders that they have access to. I have a feeling they probably have one in hand just because their deck is pretty low and they've only played one. And more likely, Pikram is going to play probably three boss, I would assume. Or it could just be like two boss and a great catcher. It's hard to say. Okay, so there's Malala. They play two. That's very uh, annoying, that's for sure. <laughs> that's going to keep this in, in this game a little bit longer. How many reset stamp have they used? Ooh, none. So that's actually something we will have to worry about. Because we're going to go down to one prize if they do eventually stamp us. Okay, there is going to be a Volkner. That's fine. So if they're going to knock out our doll, I almost kind of want to see them just attack with the Dene even because they can tingly return and get the Dene back. That actually seems probably good, but and they can get a GX off the board too, which would be good for them as well. All right, so yeah, we'll just do this. Okay, broken. So we just have game now. Because we can just do this. Cash our twin energy and bosses orders up the Jirachi for the game. So let's go for a smack and run. Doesn't even matter who we promote, we're just going to probably throw up the doll here, and that's gonna be the game, guys. So take in the, the dub on Pikaram here. We managed to avoid tag bolt. I think that was the big thing that really kept us in the game. Avoiding tag bolt and tossing away the aura choreo. We were Pretty fortunate enough to be able to survive without Oracorio. <laughs> Otherwise, you never know that game actually could have gone a little bit south for us. So, yep. Alrighty, so loading into, it looks like against a deck that's playing fire. So very curious what this is. I think that's, if this is like the standard like fire toolbox, we're just gonna get destroyed because we can't deal with nine tails really. 
So, uh, but if it's like Scent Scorch or something like that, I think we're actually probably okay here. Uh, Cramorant could also be bad. We did see a Hyper Potion there, so I'm thinking either Scent to Scorch or uh, Cinderace, probably. Okay, Scent to Scorch. So now, if they play Cramorant, we're in a bad spot because we don't play Mew in this list. And Mew is like one of those cards, like pre rotation, that would be really good, but post rotation, I'm not convinced we need it in here just yet. But I actually feel pretty good about this matchup specifically. Wonder Lab's probably not too great in this particular matchup, but I think I'm actually just gonna save that to be a counter stadium more than anything else. So we'll just go for the Marty at this point. All right, so we just have to kind of sit on this hand for the moment. Because, uh, you know, we could play the Quick Ball, but we actually need to save it to maybe get Oracorio if if we don't top deck like a supporter or something like that. So here they're just gonna go for the Radiating Heat. So our opponent's not having too good of a start from after that uh, Marnie either. So I think we just let them knock out the doll here. Unfortunately. Actually, no, we could have attacked because I forgot we're going to get the air balloon back. Because I was thinking we don't want to promote the curse law and not have anything in play. But again, at the same time, maybe it was fine because we would have, unless we benched the Oracorio, curse law would have been the only thing in play at that point. Okay, so we will go for the Dance of Tribute. I don't like having to put down the Oracorio, but we definitely need to draw some cards. Okay, so that's really good. We will. Oh, we have to do this. Don't forget to get down Wimpod as well. Um, sure, we can do Cursula. That's fine. And we'll get rid of Marnie here, grab another Squabbit. And Zamazenta actually could potentially be relevant in this matchup, but more than likely they're playing a bunch of Volcanians. If they're playing something more like a like a Jirachi engine and maybe like only one or two Volcanians, the Zamazenta could be good here, but we'll have to just kind of time it at the, the right moment. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna go for the Smack and Run. And we're just going to promote the Cursula. There's another Heat Fire Energy. So, what? 210. Okay, so here they're just kind of taking their time. That's okay with me, I suppose. So, we'll get down a, another Squabbit here. I mean, I don't think we need to even toss this hand away. So I think for the moment, we're just kind of content. We'll go for Great Ball. If we find another Curse Lug, I would like that, but. I think we'll grab the Greedent here. I don't want to preemptively grab the Marshadow because that, that might tell them, hey, I don't want to put down my stadium just yet. So I kind of want to force them to uh, put down their stadium and then kind of surprise them. So let's go for the smack and run. We'll promote the Cursula yet again here. And hopefully uh, they just knock this out and we get three prizes. That would be fantastic. I don't know if we're going to get that lucky or not, but so there's the quick pulse. Our opponent's no doubt is going to hop back in this game. We'll probably see a Dedenne or a Crobat, I would imagine. Okay, yeah. But here's where things actually get a little bit more exciting because we can actually potentially get a knockout with Golisopod on this next turn as well. Right now, Glass Pot's hitting for what, 180? So, yeah, that would be a knockout if we can find our Golisopod. Okay, but looks like they're maybe just taking some time to go for Flare Starter, power up some stuff. I'm cool with that. Uh, I can live with that, honestly. So, 
So I think we'll what, great ball here. And at this point, we'll just go for the smack and run. Unfortunately, Volcanion can knock this out. Like, and if we get one prize, that's like not that great, but. Uh, we'll see what happens though. Getting rid of a Synth Scorch V. Okay, going for another Dedenny. I'm cool with that. That's only gonna fuel our Wind Pods. So again, guys, I actually feel pretty good about how this game's going to go, unless, again, they have a Cramorant hiding in their deck somewhere. Uh, Eldegoss hitting the discard's also good. That's one less boss's orders we have to sort of contend with here. Okay, so there is the Fire Energy. Kind of saw that one coming. Now, hopefully we can grab ourselves a prize here off this Volcano. That would be really good. And we do, so I am... Definitely okay with that, so we do get a prize. All right, so what do we promote? Like if we whiff the, like if we whiff the uh, Golisopod, that feels kind of horrible. <laughs> um, I think I'm cool with it though, because we have our Oracorio, and we can thin a little bit before we go that route. So we definitely get down our Squabbit no matter what. We, what, we get rid of, I think we get rid of the Ingo and Emmett here because we have Oracory to draw his cards. Get rid of Zamazenta. I don't think we're actually going to need Zamazenta. We'll grab more Shadow. Unfortunately, we do have to kind of reveal that we play that. And then we need a Great Ball or a Communication. So we still have a decent amount of outs, but fingers crossed, guys. We need one to get the, our easy two prizes here. And we do get the glass pod. That's really, really big. So we'll get that down. Um, we will communication. We'll put, I think, Greedent back in deck just in case of like a, just in case of like a Marnie or something like that. And actually, we can knock out this other Senta Scorch potentially. Because this thing's already like gonna go down pretty soon. So I kind of wouldn't mind taking this out while we have the opportunity. Like, I don't really care about this Dedenne too much, to be honest. So yeah, we're just gonna do this. And from there, I think we'll. We'll probably evolve because more likely they're just going to knock out the active. I don't see too much of a reason to bring up the ingredient here. But we'll just go for the hard time slash. So this is their only remaining set scorch is like heavily damaged. And we can pretty easily, I think, clean up this uh, knockout if they do evolve into the VMAX. Because we only need three prizes left to win. So I think that is our path to victory here. Now we do see, I think on their mulligan, they play things like hyper potion. So that's something we might have to watch out for. But this guy being damaged, I would much rather contend with this to close out the game than um, like a freshly powered Scent of Scorch. And so unless they have another Scent of Scorch V, I think they're actually out of these. I think this is their last one more than likely. There's the Welder. Do they have the Hyper Potion? Do they have the V Max? Okay, there is a Jirachi. Okay, so communication, probably going for their Sense Scorch V Max. They definitely do want to find a way to heal. Because right now, what, we're hitting 180. And that actually would knock them out if we can attack with this. Ooh. So, Wonder Lab, that's fine. Not really worried about that. So, it has 120 HP left plus so 140, 160, 180. So, yeah, we can actually still knock it out with a with one of these guys. So I think we're just actually just gonna go for it this turn, I think. 
<laughs> okay, there we go. We got it right away. So we'll just communicate, uh, squab it back and deck. That's fine. We got our homing glass pod. And I'm pretty sure that should be enough because 120 remaining, 140, 160, 180. Yeah. And we'll just hit them with the GG because they don't have a big charm or anything else. And we'll just go for the glass pod here. Don't even, didn't even need to greet it. <laughs> glass pod was kind of our MVP in this particular game. So yeah, glass pod definitely kind of showing its strength here against the Synth Scorch deck. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up our look here at the Greedent deck. I've been really having a lot of fun with some of these single prizers that Darkness of Blaze is giving us. And, you know, in the post-rotation format, we'll have to see how good Greedent is going to do. But I really do like a lot of aspects about this deck. The Glycopod, insane closing Pokemon, hits like a truck. Galarian Cursula, I mean, if you're good at flipping heads, I mean, also a pretty good card. Uh, in terms of, like, going forward, any changes to the list, like, I think we'll have to keep your eye on maybe something like Mew. If Bench Sniping does become popular, that could be something that winds up working its way back into this list. Or even maybe the new Mimikyu that will prevent uh, Mao and Lana. That's also a card I've kind of thought about here. But, uh, yeah, been having a lot of fun with this, guys. If you're sick of the two and three prizers and you want something a little bit more slow and methodical, definitely feel free to play around with the stack. I think it's a good bit of fun. But with that being said, guys, hope you did enjoy this video today. Of course, if you did, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you can, also consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store at rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.